sequencing words. And they have a certain name. Those are called temporal words. So we're going to look at those. And what we're going to do is we are going to kind of extend on the scene when Henry and Chen first meet each other. And I'm going to know that we kind of, you understood our temporal words, because you're going to put those into your scene that we sequence. So a temporal word, does anyone don't have any background knowledge on what a temporal word is? At <coughs> yeah, well, kind of like we just sequenced our, the end of the story, they sequence words. But are they just first, next, and then, and then, and then, and last, this happens. Addie? Yeah, it can give me a specific time. Something like that. Late afternoon. Caden? Well, that would be stating the exact time. But this is kind of just, these are words. So not necessarily the time. Noon. So around noon. to just refer to exactly when you're starting your scene. So if I look at page 100 in my book, in the one, two, third paragraph, it says, early in the evening, they go to the pier with the Travises. They can see the ruins more clearly. Everything hits Shin now. They have lost their homes and all they own. What are some temporal words I can pick out of that? Aubrey? In the early evening? There's one other one that's in there that kind of tells me when it's going on. Andrew? Um, early afternoon. Well, from what we read, it says early in the evening. We go 100. Um, but keep reading on. Alexis? Um. Um, now? Now. It says everything hits Chin now. So when I first started reading, I knew that it was early in the evening. And they're talking about looking across the bay at San Francisco. Well, then it says everything hits Chin now. Those words kind of let me know exactly when that took place. It doesn't tell me that everything finally hit Chin when he got home later that night. It tells, it lets me know exactly when he started to really realize what had gone on. What if I look at 101? That first, that first actual paragraph that's there. It says, then Chin feels something wet touch his cheek. At first, he thinks it is a tear. But then, he feels another and another. His shirt is wet, he looks up, it is raining. I heard quite a few temple words in there. Kirsten? Then. Then. Gunner? First. At first. And one other one. It. No. It's not telling me, it doesn't tell me when something happens. So, then this happens. Well, at first this happened. Maddie? Oh. Not another. I'll give you a hint. It's a word that we already said. It kind of repeats itself. Not another. AJ? But then. But then. So when I read that whole that whole paragraph, <coughs> it shows me kind of change over time. First this is what happened, but then this happened, and then this happened. It sequences <coughs> the event. It lets me know. Teachers, part of the interruption. We are looking for some glasses that were left in the third grade girl's bathroom just like a few minutes ago. The girl went in to retrieve them, and they're gone. So somebody has them. If they could bring them to the office, we'd appreciate it. Sorry for the interruption. Thank you. They don't have any glasses. No. Okay. okay. So what are some other temporal words that we could think of? I can write up here. Temporal words. What then? What then? Lexus? Oh, at first. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think we 
parts that we didn't read today. Okay? Oh, like at this moment. rather than later, that kind of tells me when I should do it. Like your parents say you should probably clean your room sooner rather than later. What's another one? AJ? Finally. Finally. So there's lots and lots. I actually have a pretty cool cheat sheet. It's very bad. This, there's two pages of it too. So these were, they kind of give us the order. So if I'm talking about something that happened before, well instead of saying before, I can say earlier, in the past, not long ago, previously, prior to. There's different options. The same with when something happened first, next, sometimes, last. So I have these, and then if something happens, something always happens, well I don't have to use the word always, because I could say continually, continuously, every time something happens. There's other words that I can use instead. They're all different temporal words. And what we did is I made you guys kind of a cheat sheet. That has all of those on there. So that will hang up in the room. But both sides of this just has different temporal words that I can use. So when I go through my writing, I'm sequencing what happened, I can look at this page as a reference. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at the scene when Henry and Chen are reunited. What happens when they're reunited? Um, they hug each other. They hug. And then does it tell us anything else that happens? No. It kind of, it skips straight to telling me that Ossing greeted the Travises. If I had just seen my best friend after not seeing him for a bunch of days and after everything I went to, through, <coughs> do you think I'm just going to hug him and just going to go on like normal? Mm -hmm. No. There's going to be a lot of things that I could tell my friend about. Lots of feelings. I was so scared when I was, I was chopped under all the rubble. My dad had to ply me, or pull with a crowbar, pull me out of my room because it was stuck. Well, my dad was on fire. I had to help him put him out. Guess what? My dad stood in front of a bull for me. You're going to talk to your friend a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that scene when they first meet back up with each other, and we are going to go back and write a narrative of what could happen. So what are some, what are some things that you would put into your writing, some feelings that you first saw your best friend? How are you going to react? Alexis? I was, um, I was really scared. Mm -hmm. Relieved. So we are, instead of writing, so I know the past ones that we wrote as either Henry or Chin, well, we're going to continue writing our scene in third person. So we're not going to say I or we. We're going to say Henry did this, Chin did that. So we're going to continue like we are the author. But you could say that Chin was so relieved to see Henry because he worried about him almost through the entire book. He always wanted to go see Henry and he was praying that he was okay. That's a really good one. Allie? If you had just saw your best friend after all this happened, you are, pick if you're, you want to be Henry or Chin, how would you feel? What would you say to him? How would you react? I missed you so much. Yeah, you might say, I missed you so much. I was so worried about you. Grant? Excited. Oh, you're very excited to see each other. <coughs> Have you ever, girls do this a lot, when they don't see their friends for a really long time and they get really excited, they jump up and down a lot. 
<laughs> I did that with my own friends. It's very silly. But you can be very excited and jump up in the air. Oh my gosh, I'm so I'm so happy you're okay. It's another one. Aubrey? Um, it doesn't have to be how you feel. It could be you're going to tell them about something that happened. I go through a lot of pain from my dad to straight fire. You wouldn't believe what happened to me. And then you could tell them everything. And then Chin could say, well, no, no, no. You wouldn't believe what happened to me. Mommy? Crying. What is it? Cryish. Mm, explain cryish. Tears of sadness, are they? No. no. We call those tears of joy. joy. Tears of joy. I'm so, oh, so <laughs> happy to see you. But you can write about that. So, this is kind of how I might start mine. So after the boys hugged, because I know that that is that's where I'm starting my scene, and I use the word after. It's my temporal word. After the boys hugged, Chin immediately started to tell Henry how his tenement had collapsed on him. I was so scared when that happened, my dad told me to stay calm. When I finally felt the breeze on my hand, I knew we could dig our way out. What do you notice about what Shin said there? What he put around what he said? I noticed. Yeah. What are those things that he put around? Because I, I know that that's what Shin was saying. How do I know that's what he was saying? Yeah, so you can use dialogue. So you're still going to tell it from the author's point of view. You're going to say, Chin did this, Henry did this. But then you can put dialogue in there. And in your dialogue, you would say, I was so scared. So you're going to start it. You can start it however you'd like. But you're going to go to where they first met each other. And you're going to tell me how you would extend on that scene. Aubrey? I would like yeah, you're like you're the author. You are Lawrence. Yeah, Alex. Are you like making up things that didn't You are, but you're not making up things that didn't happen. You're not going to tell your friend that you went and rode a roller coaster because that's not what happened. You have to use what really happened in the story, but you can make up how they tell each other and how they react. Adrian. So like. We're making up some of it, not the parts that were that were like scary and someone could die from it. What do you mean? Like um like he um like we're not changing the things where someone could get hurt from one of those danger things. Right. But Everything that really did happen did happen. You can't pretend it didn't happen. But you can create how they reacted to each other. But you're not going to have your characters not excited to see each other. Because we know that they were very excited to see each other because they were very worried the whole time. AJ? Are you allowed to um, like, just talk about like what one person said? Yeah, you can do it from like one point persons. I might have at the beginning that... I said this to Chin, and then at the very end, Chin started to tell me about something. But then you you want to wrap it up at the end. So it's going to have, it's not a topic sentence. It's kind of a, it's a starting out. You're not, you have to start out from the scene where it ended. So after the boys hugged. That's exactly where I know my scene is starting. It's not like a topic sentence like we wrote for, um, Abraham Lincoln. And when we write a conclusion, that's not like a wrap-up. We're not saying that the earthquake was a terrible thing that will always be remembered. We're saying that the boys knew that they would be talking for days about their adventures and that if they made it through this, they could be friends for a very long time. So make sure we're not we're not writing like our informative writing. Addie? You can start it like that, or you can start it. I'm going to give each of you this temporal word 
going to teach you. So if you want to change the word after to something else, <coughs> or as soon as they hug and step back and Henry told Chin, man, you really do smell like fish. Kind of however you want to start, but you have to make sure that you're including your temporal words. Aubrey? Can you guys do a question? Sure. Um, not right now. So if you will go back to your seat, it is in your composition.